Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the murder and haunting of Grace Brown. Now Grace Brown was born in March 1886 and she was raised in South Oslick, New York. And while she was there, she grew up with an older sister. Once her sister moved out, she ended up following her sister and would live with her and her husband. To help make ends meet, Grace took a job at the Gillette Skirt Factory. And while she was there, she came in contact with Chester Gillette, who was the owner's nephew. Now Chester was really handsome and he was wealthy and considered a great eligible bachelor. A lot of women from high society wanted to capture him per se. Now the issue with this is he wasn't willing to settle down. He had a lot of women who were chasing after him and his prospects were open. And like any rich playboy, he was enjoying himself. At one point, he ended up noticing Grace and they began flirting and talking and just paying an extraordinary amount of attention to each other. And then finally, one day, Mr. Gillette decided he was going to take her or see her rather without an escort in Edwardian times and I believe Victorian as well, women who were being courted by a man always had an escort to make sure that obscene behaviors didn't happen. Obscene by today's standards would be sex. And um, <laughs> they, they tried to dispel that as much as possible because a woman's virtue was important at marriage. Unfortunately, Chester Gillette got Grace to see him without an escort. Uh, a chaperone, an escort, and he ended up impregnating her. So now we're looking, this is spring 1906, Grace became pregnant and she was begging Chester Gillette to marry her so that she could be viewed as an honest woman by today, by her, her day's society. She knew that her parents would be upset if she ended up pregnant without being married or even being pregnant before marriage. So she was begging him for weeks, please marry me, please make an honest woman of me. And Chester wasn't willing to do that. While he was seeing Grace, he was also seeing women of a higher social class. And like I said, he was just not willing to commit to Grace fully. And he never took her anywhere. He didn't tell his friends about her. He didn't tell his family about her. And her friends knew all about their relationship and they warned Grace, this man is not what he seems, but Grace was naive and in love and refused to see all the red flags that were waving in her face. She wanted to believe that Chester was going to be a man who stood to his word and had his own honor, but unfortunately he was not. So now we move into July of 1906. Grace has been pregnant for a couple of months and pretty soon she's going to show. So she, again, begs him to marry her. So he stalls as long as possible before he finally makes an awful decision. When he decided, okay, I'm going to marry you, this is what he tells her, she believes him. So they end up going on a lake trip together, and this took place at Big Moose Lake, which is also in New York. He decided to murder her. And this was one of the saddest situations that I could think of. Grace believed that he was finally going to propose to her. They were sitting on a boat together on a lake. She was all prepared for her life with him. And instead of presenting her with a ring, he smacked her with a tennis racket over the head and she fell in the water and drowned. And of course, Chester took off. He didn't tell the people that he rented the boat from what happened. He just disappeared. <clears throat> However, people did remember seeing them together, and when her body surfaced on the water the following day, he was arrested, and he had told the police initially, I don't know who this woman is, but when he was presented with love letters from Grace as evidence, then he had to admit, okay, I knew Miss Grace Brown, but I didn't want to marry her, and she couldn't handle that, so she jumped off the boat and drowned herself. And he initially thought that people were going to believe this. Of course, they didn't. 
And after a court trial, he was sentenced to death where he was electrocuted. So this was all very tragic and sad. You know, it's a horrible situation. Grace and her unborn baby died. Chester died. He had a future ahead of him. He was good looking. He had money. Why did he do this? Grace also would have had a future ahead of her. Maybe not to the same extent as him because women didn't have the same rights that we have now, the rights that we take for granted. So she may have been shunned by society, but I don't know for sure that her parents would have disowned her. Maybe they would have, but I, I would like to think not. Sometimes families would take in uh, a child born out of wedlock and say it was the grandmother's child and they would raise that baby as a sibling to the mother. I have heard of that happening. I even have relatives who claim that happened, I believe, to one of my great-great-aunts, but the, the story with that is fuzzy, and that's not the point. So, we're going to fast forward many years later. People who go to the Great Moose Lodge have said that they have seen a shimmery ghost appear by the water of the lake, and they have seen someone who looks a lot like Grace gliding across the water. Sometimes she'll show up in cabins or along the, the shoreline. And they have seen this woman disappear and evaporate and disappear. And she's always there. And this has been witnessed by several people and it has been going on for years. If they don't see her wandering along the sides of the lake, then they see her standing and crying or people have also claimed to witness that they have seen her drowning over and over again. And this has been reported for over a hundred years. So we're in 2022, people have been saying this since the 1910s. So it's something to think about. I've heard that many people who die suddenly and or violently experience unrest, but I've also heard people who died of long drawn out illnesses will haunt places. So I'm not sure. I, I find it fascinating. I personally believe in ghosts, but I don't believe in every single thing that I hear. I tend to believe more or less what I have experienced or people who I'm close to what they have experienced because I've seen some weird stuff in my day. But I don't, I don't know about this story. I know that the murder happened, obviously, but what I'm saying is I'm not sure if I believe that her ghost is there. There is a, a very strong possibility that it's true. Um, a lot of people have made the same claims who never knew each other. However, this is a type of folklore and it's an urban legend. So of course, many people have heard this and either they will claim that they saw this woman for attention or by the power of influence. So it's something very remarkable. Um, Unsolved Mysteries did a, a segment on her and one of, there were two women that went to go visit this lake. They were old friends and um, the two of them saw two very different things. One of them claims that she just saw a mist on the water and assumed that it was fog. But another woman said that she saw Grace's spirit above the water and that she looked very sad. And that's both eerie and depressing. Um, I, like I said, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And then, of course, there's always the typical, oh, wow, I had no idea about this story. And then I saw a photograph and wow, that was the person in the picture. So one of the women that had claimed to see Grace above the water had said that she had no idea about this murder case and then happened to see historical photos, I think at some uh, community cabin, you know, that the grounds had. And it was talking about the history of the lake and Grace's murder obviously was part of the history. So they had photographs about the murder trial and of the victim and of the perpetrator. So this woman who had been to the lake before somehow never knew about this. This is where my doubt obviously will come in. And she claims, I never knew about this murder trial and I never knew what Grace Brown looked like, yet I went into this cabin and I saw photographs of her and I said to myself, yes, that is the woman that I saw. I, I just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. It's an interesting case nonetheless, and I think it's tragic and awful sad. And I'm curious to, think, to know what you guys think. And 
Yeah, so that is the very sad story of Miss Grace Brown. I live in New York, but I am in the city. I'm not anywhere near Big, uh, Big Moose Lake, although that would be cool. I'd like to see that. So maybe one day if I ever go up there, I'll film it and take pictures and show you guys. So thanks for listening, and I hope everyone is having a great day. Stay safe and watch the people that you allow into your life. Don't believe everyone because a lot of people have two faces. They have the face that they wear on the inside, their real face, and they have a mask. Always try to look for the mask, if at all possible. Thanks.